Hi, and welcome to episode 3 of my Essential Flame series. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at conforming and round tripping with DaVinci Resolve. So, Flame obviously has a very tight integration with the Autodesk products, such as uh, Smoke and Luster, but Flame also has strong communication with products like Avid, Final Cut, Premiere, and of course DaVinci Resolve. So this is a brand new project in Flame. This is set at 1080, 25 frames per second. Let's just switch to Resolve for a moment. So here's our edited timeline in DaVinci Resolve. And to send this to Flame, all I need to do is export an XML. So we just say File, Export XML. Let's give it a name. And press Save. So now back in Flame. And if we click on Conform, we now have the option to load an XML, AAF, or EDL. So obviously AAF from Avid and we're going to bring in the XML. So I'm going to right click, remember in Flame that it's Command on a Mac to right click, and just point to the XML. There's our XML, so I'm just going to highlight it, and then just make sure down here that you're set to Link to Media Files. If you've already imported the files into Flame, you can deselect that option. And just say Import. And now you see my Conform, here's the list of clips that it's brought in. I can click on any one of these to have a look in my viewer. If you press Alt and click on a clip, it brings up the metadata for that clip. So you can check any information that you want. So if we click on our Tools page, and here's our sequence in our Sequences Reel. And we can also Alt click on here and have a look at the metadata. So you can see that this is set to 1080, 25 frames. And here are the individual clips that make up that timeline and they are in a sources reel. So now over to the timeline. There is our conformed edit. So you see all the edits, hopefully in the correct order. And just to double check that, what we're gonna do is if we go to the Media Hub, we can actually import a reference file. So we've got a flattened QuickTime file showing all those edits in the correct order. So if I just point to the file, it's here. I'm gonna choose reel one and select import. And let's switch to the timeline. And what we can do now is add a video track. So we've got three video tracks now. We've got two because we've got a video track one and there was a second video track in our XML. Bring in our QuickTime reference file and just literally edit that into the timeline. So I've got snapping on here so it makes it easier to align at the front. What we're looking at now is our QuickTime reference file because that's got burnt in time code. But if I go to our viewing options, so show viewing settings, and we can do what's called a side-by-side -side compare mode. So switch off primaries and put it into side-by-side. -side. So at the moment it's looking at itself, but what we can do is have primary track 1.3 on here. That's our primary track because it's got the P on it. And the secondary can be our layer 1.2. So everything 1.2 and below. So now what we're doing is comparing our original QuickTime file with our timeline. And it all looks good. So in fact, this shot was a resize, so the XML has come across correct. If there was a mismatch here, we can use the editing tools to trim and slip and slide or whatever we need to do to get everything lined up. You'll also notice down here we're looking at frames. So in Flame, we can switch that to be timecode, which would be preferable in this instance. So if we go down to our Flame Preferences and go to User Interface, and we can switch that here, Time Display Mode, from Frame to Timecode. And there now we can see time code instead of frames. And so once we're happy with the conform and we've checked everything, we can get rid of this QuickTime reference file if we like. So if I just press link here, and that links the video and the audio together, I can now right click and delete. So we can switch the viewer back to a primary view and we're done. So, and let's also close down our viewing options. And what we're going to do now is add an effect to one of the clips on the timeline. So normally the effects work in Flame is done in batch, but we can access these tools from the timeline, so we don't have to switch over. So this shot here is actually slightly zoomed in, and that information came across in the XML from the edit suite. But if we look at the same shot a few shots earlier, you'll see that this is the actual frame size, and in the bottom corner here we've got a couple of characters walking through. So we're going to get rid of that now using the effects. So it's really easy to do. All we have to do is select the clip we want to work on. Just press Shift to zoom your timeline. We've selected the clip that we want to work on. Press Effects. And here's the main effects tools. And to enter Batch, just say Create Batch Effects. And so now we're inside Batch. 
and Batch is Flame's node-based compositing area. There's a whole host of tools in here that allow you to do anything you can imagine. We're going to use the Paint tool in this instance, and if you can't find a particular tool, just press the letter that it begins with and it will highlight all those tools. So in this example, the letter P. So just drag and drop the tool that you want into the node graph, and if you press Shift at the same time, Flame will automatically link the nodes correctly. So what you're seeing here is the source clip, and the yellow box denotes the front of that clip. That's routed through to the paint effects, and then out again. And then switch off the effects nodes, and you then have access to all the tools that you have inside paint. So what we want to do is use the cloning tool. So let's go to the mode and change it from color, which would literally let us paint color onto the scene, and we can change that to clone. And it's quite a good idea at this point to change to a two-up view so that you can see the result of the composite and the node graph. And obviously this is not a single frame, this is multiple frames. So at the moment the clone tool is set to current frame. Let's change that to be a range. And it's going to go from frame 1 to frame 13, which is our last frame. So let's go on to our first frame. Shift and Control allows us to select our cloning area and then click again and your paintbrush will now become a clone tool so that clone has gone across all 13 frames and you could keyframe this if you want to so now all we have to do is exit the batch effects so we're back on our timeline we can see that the cloning's happened there so we've got no characters in the shot anymore and all we have to do now is render this so let's just switch over to our tools page and here you can see the sequence with our effect on it and what we can do now is export this out. So we're going to send it back to DaVinci Resolve. And the easiest way to do this is via XML. So let's right hand click and say export. So there's a few different options here. And sequence publish allows us to export the individual clips. If we chose movie, that would do a flattened file. So we could do that as a QuickTime file, for example. And in the sequence publish menu, you can choose presets. So AAF to Avid, XMLs to Final Cut. And we're going to choose XML to DaVinci Resolve and then simply press export. So we've now exported this timeline as an XML. So let's have a look in DaVinci Resolve. There is our original sequence. So you can see there we still have our two characters in. So if we now right hand click in here, we can import our XML. So this is the XML that was created by Flame. And we just say open. So we can leave all this set at its default and that will allow Resolve to import the clips automatically from Flame. This is our new timeline and you can see here the clip that we worked on in Flame. So we're showing here the ease in which you can go from one system to another. So we've gone from DaVinci Resolve, exported an XML into Flame, done some compositing work, sent the XML back, and that has now updated our timeline in Resolve. In the next episode, we're going to look at batch effects in more detail. So thanks for listening.